explain a little bit about that. Uh, for certain geological processes to continue for a long time on a planet, uh, you need to provide an energy source. And today, the most important energy source for rocky planets like the Earth are the decay of long-lived radioactive isotopes like potassium-40, uranium-238-235, thorium-232. Now, these radioactive isotopes are produced in massive star supernovae called type II supernovae. And so they produce them in their deep interiors. And when they explode, they seed the galaxy with these heavy elements. Now, the star formation rate is gradually declining. And so the rate at which these geologically important elements are being produced is slowing down. And so Earth-sized planets, planets like the Earth formed in the future, will not be as geologically active. Okay, And so eventually they will not be able to maintain plate tectonics. And so there's a, there's a time window in the history of the universe when you can have habitable planets. And you can't be too early in the history of the universe because the universe was a much more dangerous place early on. Uh, nasty things like giant black holes forming in the centers of uh, galaxies, uh, which we see today as distant quasars, emit enormous amounts of energy. Uh, supernovas were much more frequent in the early universe. Uh, and so it was not a very habitable place. And so this window of time when the universe is most habitable coincides with the window of time when it's best to do cosmology. Okay, so I've given you three examples. So what? What does it mean that habitability correlates with measurability? Well, I argue that it forms a meaningful pattern. The correlation of habitability and measurability forms a meaningful pattern. Let me illustrate that. Probably, do you recognize that location? Anybody? Those are the telescopes, the Keck telescopes on top of uh, a volcano on Hawaii. Two uh, very large telescopes. Uh, now suppose you're an alien visiting the Earth and doing a survey uh, on your flying saucer. And you notice that uh, certain uh, mountaintops have these structures on them. And uh, these structures uh, have people inside of them and they open up at night and uh, they look at the stars. And they realize, oh, these are observatories. And they have astronomers working at, in them. Oh, that makes sense. They put observatories on top of mountains because those are the best places to observe from. So have, they have observers in the best places to observe from, at least if they do things intelligently. right? You don't put Keck in downtown LA. <laughs> you put it on the top of the mountain on Hawaii. And so they notice this pattern. Oh, yes, yeah, so that, that was definitely designed. It was intended. Okay, It's a good match. It's a match between people who want to observe and the best conditions for observing. Okay, So that's a meaningful pattern. So we argue that the correlation is more likely on the hypothesis that the universe is designed for discovery than on the chance hypothesis. and reach a modest conclusion that the universe is fine-tuned so that environments habitable to observers provide the best overall conditions for observation and discovery. In other words, the universe is designed for discovery. And that's my conclusion. Thank you very much. <laughs>